Hi, I'm John Gersma from the Harris Poll, and we are at Cannes with Marissa Solis, head of a global brand from the NFL, and Claudia Romo Edelman. It's so nice to meet you. We are all human. Thank you so very much. Excited to be here with both of you. Yes, very excited, John. I'm so excited. First of all, tell me, what are your opinions on Cannes? What have you guys been doing? So it's day one for mm -hmm. us. Uh, so definitely a mixture of awesome business meetings yeah. and conversation, great dialogue, a lot of hot sun, uh, but just uh, you know an incredible group of people talking yeah. about the power of creativity and our you know our world today. Fantastic, Claudia. Um, day one of year 18. 18. So this okay. has been my yeah my can lie on 18 and delighted to be. If, like to see the change of mm. creativity at the core, but with an understanding that the world is browner, more feminine, and with mm. a bigger heart than ever before, and that you can see that reflected on stage, you can see that reflected in events, and in the you know like in the understanding that you know like Gen Z wants to be you know like working and consuming with companies that they align their values with, and so that you know like brands and and creativity is catching up to the topics that Marisa and I are here to represent. That's a really interesting point for both of you. I, I think I would start uh, with you, Claudia, but if you think about your background, because you were involved in Product Red, you've been involved in the World Economic Forum, all these different campaigns, how have you sort of seen the concept of diversity changing inside corporations? Look, diversity, equity and inclusion, belonging, whatever you want to call that, It is what, uh, for the next 10 years, what sustainability was 20 years ago. It is an imperative mm. for companies and brands, whether we have a little bump right now that there's like, you know, like some parties saying like it is too much, like it's always a pendulum, mm -hmm. right? Like be between not having something to having something where the younger generations are demanding to be working in organizations that will respect who they are, all of their fluent selves, and where consumers are increasingly interested in buying from things that are transparent, that are like good for the planet mm -hmm. and so on. So I think that overall what I see is that this is here to stay. It's front and center. I'm delighted to see the, the festival, the Cannes Lion Festival being so bested in diversity and inclusion. Marisa and I are going to be hosting the second main stage on Latinos ever in the history of the festival uh, on Wednesday. So it's pretty exciting to actually be seeing also how communities like ours, the Latino community, are becoming increasingly not, not only united and proud, but also front and center for brands. Marissa, clearly the NFL has had a, a huge set of objectives and, and interest and support and, uh, for inclusion, and particularly within the Latino community. Can you talk a little bit about some of the things the NFL is doing? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, as, as a unifying sports league like for us the mm. most important thing is to make sure that our fan base is engaged okay. and that we represent and engage everybody every single fan and so making sure that the experiences and the stories of our growing fan base gen z mm. our multicultural fan base our female fan base mm. um, are well represented not only on the field obviously everybody loves the sport of football um, when when they're fans but off the field as well and right. making the nfl much more approachable much more human and much more inclusive um, to all of the, all of our audiences amazing and so that's going to be sort of your focus as you think about your your speech can you talk a little bit give us a preview a little bit about what you're going to talk about yeah i mean uh, if if you want to start claudia claudia is going to give uh, a little bit of uh, some insights around a hispanic sentiment study okay was, that has just been completed uh, and then i am going to talk love data, about so. yes a lot of data and i'm going to talk about how we have leveraged that data to really create our programming and make sure that we are you know, touching the hearts and minds of, of that diverse consumer base. Okay. The, the power of the Can Lion platform is undeniable, at least for me. Um, mm. When I came with the Sustainable Development Goals, when I was working for the United Nations, I came here to say, look, if there's any way you want to attract that young consumer, the one that is going to be making the choice when they are opening their wallet to choose between two products, one that is good for the planet, one that is not, you want to use the sustainable development goals. You want to batch your briefs so that every time you have to do a work, you can say like, is this using this mm. symbol that you know like represents the best of humanity? 
we're here to, you know, like we have a proposal for Latinos called the Hispanic Star. And I've been, you know, like I want to make sure that we use that platform of the powerful platform of the Cannes Advertisement Festival to give brands alternatives to be using and to show leg to, you know, like to their consumers and to their employees to say like, I care. And this is a symbol where I have it. And we have the data to validate that, you know, like the U.S. Hispanic community in the last five years have felt more unified, more proud, and even grew despite COVID, despite, you know, like racial um, equities, despite recessions, we have grown in every sense, except in the feeling that we've been more abandoned and relegated even by big brands and media. So this is a wake up call, I would say for, you know, like an opportunity for big brands to understand that you have to invest in the community, you have to invest in representation of Latinos in, inside your agencies, inside your companies, but also, you know, like re in representation in your ads, in your campaigns, telling our stories in an authentic, genuine way and avoid stereotypes and biases because we're noticing. Interesting. And Marissa, from the NFL standpoint, I mean, you, you, Claudia, you started to kind of give us some examples of the ways that corporations can get involved. I mean, is there sort of a playbook or a scorecard or like how should corporations sort of assess their progress with the Latino community? Yeah, I, I can speak for the NFL. You know, the, the Latino community is a core fan base of ours. 32 million Latinos uh, are fans, avid fans of the NFL. So about 50% of the U.S. Hispanic population. Uh, and it's so important for us not only to represent them in our advertising um, and, you know, see brown faces, if you will, but mm -hmm. really making their experience the protagonist of our storytelling. So as an example, uh, we talk about how Latinos celebrate the game. Um, they do it in very different ways, mm -hmm. right? Whether they celebrate a touchdown uh, with their own unique dance, uh, version of the gritty, if you will, or the foods that they may be eating when they're tailgating, the way they engage the entire family in the game experience, very, very different. Um, and making their own powerful stories like that of Deanna mm -hmm. Flores, front and center in our biggest platform um, and of course Deanna being the world champion flag football player that she is telling her story was very important to inspire the community um, and again making making them feel that they're an essential part of our game which they are really interesting I, I wanted to ask you as you start to think about the the progress and sort of benchmarking about where we're at today um, one of the questions I had, and this came out of a, a study that we just did recently with Hugh, which does a lot of work in the marketing and advertising community to advocate for quality and inclusion. But we found that only um, one in four um, BIPOC uh, working professionals said that they had felt like they had the same opportunities for, for succeed, to be able to succeed, right? And it was basically benchmarked against white employees. Same sort of situation within the Latino community. And there's just still so much progress that needs to be made. And I feel like there's some counter prevailing headwinds right now, long winded question, but how does corporations sort of address these issues? How do they really get deep into these, these things? I mean, I can certainly speak about it from the NFL point of view and, and Claudia, you can chime in, but you know, for us at the end of the day is about our fan base. Mm. Um, and again, engaging the community that we serve, including the Latino community is important. Um, how that translates internally is, you know, in order to represent that experience, you have to have representation on the inside. Um, right. And you have to take some of the big bets, um, like we did with Diana's story, you know, placing her story front and center in the biggest advertising platform in the world in Super Bowl is a risk. It's a right. big bet, um, but we did it. And we did it because we felt that it was necessary and important, again, to you know make sure that internally for the employees of the NFL, um, everybody who worked on that spot, whether it was uh, you know Latino producers, um, you know Latino people working behind the camera and Latino mm -hmm. people working in front of the cameras, the talent is important, and then obviously inspiring the community. Companies and brands 
understand and want growth and that's what Latinos is. This is not about either charity, philanthropy or even diversity and inclusion. Right. This is about growth because Latinos are 62 million people. They are 20% of the Gen Z's. It's $2 trillion in purchasing power. If we would be a standalone economy, mm -hmm. we would be the fifth largest economy in the world. So that's a great starting point. And so the question really is how do you engage genuinely with Latinos as employees, as a consumer and as a community? And you were talking about scorecard. We created um, a, a framework called the Hispanic Promise that we launched at the World Economic Forum that has more than 350 companies that have signed and made a promise to Latinos to get everything that they need to do to prepare, hire, promote, retain and celebrate Latinos and buy from uh, Latinos in their workplace. And we're launching the Hispanic Star as that public facing, as that brand mm. that represents Latino unity and pride so that like the rainbow for the LGBTQ, you can have as a brand something where if you see it, you know that's good for me, that's good for Latinos, but also that you can share your support. So my dream would be that in opportunities like the Hispanic Heritage Month or Dia de los Muertos or Cinco de Mayo or just like those tent poles that everybody can have an opportunity to activate and maximize those opportunities to engage with the fan base, to engage with the consumer, navigating them with confidence. So we're from, the Hispanic Star has a number of tools and toolkits so that uh, brands can at ease actually take access and, and navigate them so that they don't have to worry like am I going to get cancelled is this the right word to call this community right. or not <laughs> so an organization like mine really strives from understanding that what we what brands need is tools and we can provide them the tools because the opportunity is right there yeah. so I think that what the Hispanic sentiment study is telling this year is that the time to do it is now Really interesting. So I'm going to quote some other data. I want your opinions on both of this. But one of the findings that we came from the Harris Poll Milken Institute project was that 76% of business leaders see that changing generational values are going to have a major disruptive effect on their business. And yet at the same time, we also know that this Gen Z that they're talking about is also the most diverse like population within, within U.S. history. So how do you sort of account for those things and think about Gen Z? Because it's really right in the sweet spot of, of both of what you're talking about. Gen Z is our most important, one of our most important audiences. Um, and yes, it's about diversity. I think you just said one in four, you know, are Latinos, to, uh, 20, 20, 25% are Latinos. Um, it is also about changing values and behavior, right? So. Uh, you know, Gen Z care about brands with purpose. So it's not enough to, you know, from an NFL perspective, it's not just enough to have a four, four and a half hour game that yes, they're going to enjoy. Um, it is also about the way that the league engages with communities. It is the work that we do off the field. It is the way that players engage. That's why we call our strategy helmets off because we literally want to take the helmets off of our players and introduce them to the community. And Gen Z cares about that. They want to see people as they are, right? What are their personalities? What are their interests off the field? Whether it's fashion, music, um, gaming, what are they interested in? So having uh, initiatives that showcase that off the field is critically, critically important. Um, and we do that through partners, through influencers, um, through many, many different ways, but it's a very different way to engage than only broadcasting a four and a half hour, five hour game, which is very important, but we have to surround ourselves with other things to engage this new audience. And Latinos are the youngest cohort of the US. And, and that is really like the younger you want, the more Latino, the younger, the younger you, you try to look for, the more Latinos you will find. So 20% of Gen Z, almost 25% of Alpha. Um, every minute Latino turns 18, um, our average age is 28 years old, which is a decade younger than the rest of the population. But I think that the only data point I would like you to remember throughout this entire week of the Cannes Festival is the mode, meaning the most common age. The most common age of 62 million Latinos today is 19 years old. The most common age of non-Latinos is 61. 
So that's all I wanted to tell you. Like the Gen Zs, not only of today, but in the future, the next decades of youth will be Latinos and we care about our community. What really unifies us is our desire to progress. So don't go after our wallets only. Go after our, in invest in our futures. If you want us as loyal customers, if you want us as, you know, like employees uh, that will go and work for you, in invest in our progress, in how are we gonna get to school, in how our communities are gonna be led. Look, grassroots investment, marketing-led investment, as Marisa was saying, is the way to go. And that's really the smart way to do it because of the demographic that we represent. I love anyone who talks data to me. If, as you know, that's really interesting. Last question for you both. Can we learn a little bit more about where our audience could go and learn about these initiatives? And also to take those opportunities, maximize opportunities that are like leaving money on the table, like Hispanic Heritage Month, we have a full toolkit for every brand to just go and activate it so that you can really connect with the audience this year, starting now. There will be, we'll be talking a lot about how we're engaging Gen Zs, mm. uh, particularly with our big partnerships with Amazon on Thursday Night Football, with YouTube Sunday Ticket, um, a big way to engage uh, influencers and our younger audiences. Um, we're going to be talking a lot with Claudia and the um, um, We Are All Human Foundation about how we are engaging Latinos. Um, and then we're going to be talking at Sports Beach with Diana about the power of flag football and how flag football is a way to make football inclusive and really for everyone. Bring in our female audience, bring in our younger audience, and really tie in, um, you know, everybody, whether, you know, it doesn't matter the age, gender, the ability level, uh, football is a sport that everybody can engage in. We're going to have a main stage on Wednesday with Marisa again on the terrace Wednesday at 11.45. We're going to have a number of sessions where we're going to be gathering meet and greet for Latinos. So check us out on hispanicstar.org. But the main stage is the one that you should just come to. Thank you both so much. This has been so interesting and exciting. I hope you both have a great week. Solis from the NFL and Claudio Romano. It's so nice to see you both. Thank you.